Hey you all, we are hanging out in my bathroom today. I got the sort of urge to just rearrange all of my makeup brushes. I have a makeup brush issue. I have so, so many of them and I keep buying more. I just, I love them. I love them. I love my makeup brushes. I do need to figure out a way to organize them more effectively so that I know what I'm reaching for. I can find what I need quickly and they look kind of sort of organized. So let's take a look at where I keep my makeup brushes, which is around my sink. And think about it, for those of us that do a full face of makeup, we're spending a lot of time at that station, in this case, right at the sink, and it should be organized <laughs> or should be easy to find things, right? It's a place that should bring us some joy. Right now, it's making me feel completely chaotic. I don't know that we're going to get to a place where it's ready for a magazine. I mean, that's just never my house. And I put things in range of where I need them, when I need them. So I do my best to keep the home clean and clutter free. But this is an area of my house where I like the clutter because it gives me stuff that I use frequently. I just want the clutter to be more organized. So let's try. So I had, this is my counter. Here's my sink where I get ready every morning. I had already started to begin to lay out my brushes and try to figure out how to organize them. So I wanna show you what I'm working with. If you've watched my other videos, you know that my husband makes these beautiful wood bowls for me and for our friends and for whoever. And I've asked him to make me a whole bunch to put my makeup brushes in and also just like makeup things. Like here are all of my lip liners. And I had this vision of having roll alike, don't you love that term? Roll alike <laughs> containers. So all my lip liners in here all of my foundation brushes, for example, in another container, all of my eyeshadow brushes somewhere, but it didn't quite work out that neatly. So I'm trying to rearrange things in a way that makes more sense. So I've got a lot, a lot of face brushes here, as you can see. There's just, there's so many of these, look at that. And then there's more in here. I also have this which has most of the eyeshadow types of brushes. And finally, I have this one, which has some Real Techniques brushes. Don't ask me why I've decided to keep these separate. That's just silly. So that's part of what I need to figure out, how I wanna arrange There's them. There's so many beautiful bowls and containers like this that my husband has made, and some that are off camera. I need to cull this down, maybe to a few big pots like this. I think I wanna keep the carousel because it's really convenient. I just need to figure out how I want to organize it. Right now I have all of these sort of expensive, I wouldn't say sort of, they are expensive natural hair brushes in this little container and then my other synthetic brushes elsewhere, but that's not really working out quite well. So let's see how this ends up. Finally, the other thing that I wanted to share is that I've gotten interested in once my candles blow out once they're done figuring out how to get the wax out of them to use as containers so i like for example this milky white side here and i've already put some rice in this one so that the brushes don't sit too low but i really like this one this is this octagonal one two three four five six seven eight yes <laughs> octagonally sided container here. Anyway, I don't know how I feel about that. It takes a lot of effort to melt the wax out and then clean the rest of it out that you didn't get out with the melting and then wash it. It's just a whole big pain. Let's get to this. I think what I wanna start off with is Makeup Forever. I have a Makeup Forever sponge. Shut up, I like it. What I think I wanna start off with is go large to small. So I wanna start off with my big face brushes. And I think that I want them in this gorgeous big container. So let's, let's do that. So these are brushes that I would use to powder my face. These are deep bowls. I'm putting in something like that, something to boost up the floor of the container so that the brushes kind of fan out and don't sit so deep in there. I can't think. I have 
this big brush that I got from Real Techniques. It says it's called the Rebel Edge Broad, and I used to use it for contouring or for bronzing. And it's, it's actually kind of a big brush. I don't know what I want to do with this. I'm not ready to get rid of it. I may, but for right now, this is one of those brushes that I, I just have to figure out what in the world do I really want to use you for. Okay, so I think that this takes care of all of my big like face powder brushes and I'm putting it in this big beautiful container with a wide opening. I love all of these, which is why I've kept them. You might be surprised to know that I've actually given away a lot. You might not be able to tell by this, but <laughs> some of the favorites are this one here, which I think is a Chikahodu brush. Beautiful natural hair brush, very, very soft on the face. Quite frankly, on the affordable end, this e.l.f. powder brush is awesome with the clear wand, fantastic. I love this IT 211 All Over Powder Brush too. This really does the job when you want to powder your entire face quickly. Love my Scott Barnes All Over Face Brush number 67. And I also love this Sonia Kashuk Powder Brush. It has like a denser head on it. So if you're doing like mineral powders, on your face, this is a good one. Let's put this in the far corner. I'll show you that later. Next, I think I wanna work with this container, which I love, love, love the ombre effect on here. This needs some boosting too. So let's, well, let's drop some tissue in there. I just need whatever I can to boost this up. Don't laugh at me, okay? Okay, and I think I wanna put my bronzer brushes in here. Anything that I would use to kind of contour my face. Love the Sonia Kashuk Face Pro. You can use this for powder, you can use this for blush, but I like that it's narrow here, so I typically use this for bronzer the most. This is the Wayne Goss Fan Brush, which is a nice gentle, has a nice gentle bronzing effect. This is from Refer number 22, fantastic brush for bronzer. It's stiffer, but it's soft, really, really soft. If you really want a concentrated uh, bronzer effect, or you can just brush lightly if you want something a little bit more dispersed. What am I supposed to do? These brushes like this are great for when you wanna sort of stamp in a line. It could be along the edge of your nose or it could be on your cheek. You really kinda of wanna do some carving and contouring. It's great to have some like these on hand. So this is the Sonia Kashuk Precision Contour and then the e.l.f. Contouring Brush. Yeah, I can. This is a Coyuto brush, and a lot of people don't talk about these as nice natural hair brushes, but they are a nice alternative to the more expensive Sonia G kinds of brushes and Chikahodu if you want natural hair at a slightly more affordable price. This IT number 206 Buffing Mineral Powder Brush. If you like bare minerals powder or any other powder foundation that's mineral in nature, this is the brush that you want. Brushes like this, this is from the BH Cosmetics Marble Collection, number four. It's a shorter, stiffer, denser head on here that I like to use along the cheeks to contour and sometimes inside of the crease if I my, of my eyeshadow, right? My eye, if I want just a real broad brush of like a bronzer in the crease, but because I use this mostly for contour, I'm sticking it in here too. I need like all my workhorse brushes to, to be together. The challenge becomes when there are brushes that serve multiple functions. This is an example of one. This is the Refer 05, which you can use for powdering your face. You can use it for contour. You can use it for blush. So like, where do I put this? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I want to keep it with my cheek brushes, but there's a lot of cheek <laughs> A lot of cheek brushes. Okay, I think that does it. This looks a little bit sparse. Oh, goodness gracious. Over there in that container system along here, I have the brushes that I'm actively using on that day or set of days. So this is the Sonia Niji Pro. This is a beautiful contouring brush, but I'm gonna leave it over there. So when it gets cleaned out, it'll sit in the clean brushes. Let's do blush brushes. What am I supposed to do? I'm 
I think this is pronounced Inoshige. The Inoshige Pro from Sonia G is a gorgeous, gorgeous cheek brush. Very, very nice to use. If you like a softer brush or you're sensitive to brushes or you just like a light wash, this Chikahoto uh, brush, the cheek brush, is a beautiful, I think it's squirrel hair brush. I got this rainbow brush, Doe Color, D-O-C-O-L-O-R. <laughs> There's a whole set of these on Amazon and they're so fun. Just, I just, I love the barrel color and it's a pretty decent brush. If you want a whole affordable set that's not drugstore, I would suggest from BH Cosmetics, the marble set, beautiful big set that does the job. Okay, I think that takes care of all of the cheek brushes. Let's slide that up. Let's slide that there. I don't know if it'll stay there. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, y'all. I have some shorter foundation brushes that I really, really like. I don't always use a foundation brush. I typically use a sponge. But when I want a foundation brush, I got some really nice cheap ones. This is from Amazon. It was like six bucks. The thing tore apart. Like <laughs> the base tore apart from this, but I glued it together. This head though is amazing on now, this This brush. one here, I have this Wayne Goss foundation brush. And I saw a video that he did on it where he says it's just to push it around the face and then you use something else to finish the look off. But I'm a little irritated with this brush. And here, this is another doe color or dew color from Amazon that is fantastic. These brushes here are so affordable on Amazon. Anyway, they're little and like all these other containers, they kind of get lost in them. So I wanted to figure out a way to prop them up. been through a lot of face brushes and I have different opinions about it. I haven't them. used it yet but I'm really eager to use the Sonia G Jumbo Base. I just got this like in the last few weeks and boy does it feel so soft and pretty. The Morphe foundation brush M444 is great. too wide. I don't like the way these brushes are sitting in here. It's really kind of irritating. Let's try a different container. Abort mission! Abort mission! I don't like any of this. I don't know what I'm doing here. I can't think. You know what? I think I'm going to sell this Wayne Goss brush. The fact of the matter is I'd never reach for it. What happens with this is when I try to apply my foundation, um, it streaks and according like I said to Wayne Goss you're just supposed to use it to like push the foundation around your face not to smooth it out and I don't have time to have to, I mean I already have a long enough process for my makeup do I really need a two-step application process for my foundation Wayne you done failed me so let's sell that okay I feel a little better about that it's not all flopping around all over the place so I think that can work. I forgot about this thing. I love the height of it and I had asked my husband to make some taller containers so that I can sit them sort of in the back. But I don't want these brushes separated from the others because then I don't use them. It's almost like I forget about them. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the bare, es <laughs> the bare essentials. This is so scratchy. Do I really want this? This is supposed to be to apply mineral foundation. I don't know. It's kind of a nostalgic thing, so I'm going to put it to the Maybe side. I can transfer these lip liner products in here. So you stand up straighter. It's a narrower mouth on the container. So here's my little carousel that I really want to better organize because I use a lot of the stuff in here. I'm just really bad at it. So I'm going to, first of all, just go on and take out these bigger brushes and figure out what to do with these. These are all eye brushes here. So who are you? What do you do? I guess this could be a cheek brush. So we'll put it in here with the cheek brushes. This is the Sonia G Cheek Pro, which is a gorgeous brush. It can also be used to do a little bit of contouring, but it's not as stiff. The 
the bristles on it are a little bit more splayed, if you will. So it really is best for either applying a little bit light coat of powder that was grammatically incorrect <laughs> or uh, cheek products. So let's put it with the cheek products here. This is a Sonia Kashuk angled contour brush. It's like at an angle. I'm gonna stick this with my contouring brushes. I'm gonna do the same with the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. This is denser. Okay, it's not as splayed, for example, as this one, which is softer. And I can probably use this for cream contouring. And so I'm gonna stick it over in the contour section. Sonia G Mini Base. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for, but it is a beautiful brush. It's a little bit stiffer. I can probably use this to get into like the hollows of my cheek or even run up and down the sides of my nose or under my chin or whatever. So I'm gonna stick all of these with the contouring brushes who are you the classic base i think you can do liquid foundation with this one this is a sonia g classic base so i'm going to put it with the foundation brushes so this fan brush really the only thing you can do with this is highlight or you can do some light contouring with this like on your nose same goes with this brush here that is very soft. This is the small highlighting brush from Sonia Kashuk. And this is, it, I mean, it moves so, it's very supple, I guess is the word. It moves easily from side to side. So it's not stiff. You can't, wouldn't be good to like apply. I guess you can do a powder bronzer, but it's really great for highlighting. So where do I want to put these like finishing brushes? Oh man. I'm gonna put them to the side for a minute. This brush here, and this brush here, they're both from BH Cosmetics. These are stiffer heads on these brushes. And I'm trying to think, what would I use them for? I could use them for like light powdering under the eye. But I'm going to tell you the brush that I love the most for that is this Wayne Goss. I forget what the heck this brush is called. Um, but this is the best brush. What are you called? I'll insert it on. <laughs> On the screen because it's escaping me right now like the airbrush or something this is the most magnificent softest brush for right under your eyes that's what i would reach for first so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and stick these with my contouring bronzer brushes okay now we're getting down to business let's get down let's get down to business this is the jumbo concealer brush which where would you go i'm just gonna stick it over with the highlighters for a moment and then this is the Wayne Goss O2, which I would likely use for either small powdering or for cheeks. So I'm going to stick it with the cheek brushes and call it a day. Then we get into all of these brushes here in this pocket, which are neither like crease brushes, nor are they, some of them are specialty brushes, and I don't know why they're stuck in here, but normally these are brushes that I would use to apply really concentrated shadow to my eyelids or do something special. So let's lay these out. There are some others that have escaped into here, like these little smudger brushes, and this, this is why I need to organize. Then the section in the middle has been all of my like fluffy crease brushes. The problem, the mistake I made, as I mentioned before, is that I tried to put all of my natural hair brushes into a special section so that I can use them when I want it to be a little bit extra. But um, it makes it then difficult to choose between the synthetic and this because they're not grouped in their role alike families. So let's just grab all these beauties out. Y'all, that's a lot of brushes, okay? And we got the real techniques and others over here. So let's just throw them all in together and sort as a big bunch. Jesus, Jesus, I'm gonna need help. I'm summoning you. So I'm gonna separate them out by brushes that I would use for my shadow crease, brushes that I would use to apply and pack shadow onto the lid space or the outer corners, or do like detail work. And another set that's really like for liner, for smudging, and for really small detail work. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. We ready? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm just gonna go. And I'll tell you about ones that I really love, like all of the Wayne Goss crease brushes, whether they be synthetic or real, 
are fabulous. Because the crease brushes are the workhorses, I'm gonna put them in the middle because I wanna be able to reach for them. Refer also makes some great crease brushes. This is the number 16, and I have a few others floating around in this set here. What am I supposed to do? The Refer number 15, fabulous. You want a more affordable brush the elf fluffy eye blender brush is fabulous for the crease i can't think okay i think i have most of the big bigger fluffier crease brushes in this pile here next i am actually going to do the opposite and go to like the detail brushes which would be little smudger brushes or brushes designed to use with liner because those will be easier to pick apart from the crowd and put here and then we can figure out what to do with like the in-between ones. Brushes like this and this is called, what are you? B Pro? <laughs> the B Pro pencil brush that I got from Amazon. I think it's natural hair, but there are huge brush sets on Amazon that are very affordable. If you don't wanna spend the big like Sonia G, Wayne Goss kinds of dollars, get on Amazon and just make sure that you check the reviews and that they are legitimate reviews from sincere people that have not been paid by the company to leave a, a review, so. See, this is a liner brush. I've never used this. In fact, what am I doing with this? But I might use it one day. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. I can't. Okay, so all of these brushes here are like the detail brushes for smudging and liner and that kind of thing. So they're all in a happy little family over here. I want to do another pocket here for brushes that I would use to pack on eyeshadow in special places. They're stiffer, they're smaller, the head is smaller, they're denser, and they're designed to really grab your eyeshadow and pat them onto, let's say, the outer corner or maybe the inner corner. So I want those to have their own dedicated space as well. Loved these angled, angled shade brushes from Sonia Kashuk. It's called the Angled Eyeshadow. And I have several angled brushes. Like here's another one from Sonia Kashuk. This is called the Buffing Concealer, but I use this for eyeshadow. Then I have a series of what I just call specialty brushes. Let's get the toilet paper out of the shop, Veronica. How about that? So the people aren't staring at toilet paper on your couch. <laughs> they are like the Scott Barnes number 63, which has almost like a, it's like a tiny fan. That's so great for lots of different things. You can do specialty work. You can run this along the crease. You can do highlighter. You can do brow bone with this. 
So I have a lot of these kinds. Another one of his that I just love is the number 61 that looks like a total fan, right? Side to side. Um, I liked it so much that I bought a second one. How about that? Same with this one from BH Cosmetics. I don't remember what the set was that this belonged to. This is from Bare Essentials. Oh my Lord, this thing is probably 25 years old, but it's a thin angled brush again with a, a, a tapered brush with a thin head. I have this one from e.l.f., I think it is. It's called the Dome Eyeshadow. Anyway, these are like specialty brushes when you're trying to do something a little bit funky in your crease or the outer corner or whatever. I kind of think they go in their own category. I can't think. Here's the like weirdo brushes that have strange angles on them that are fun to use when you want a special kind of effect. I have one more pocket and I think I know what I want to do with that. You'll be proud of me. I have this other group of brushes that I don't know what to do with, but I don't want to get rid of because I know I will use them for various things. Is, I'll probably never use this again. The Bare Essentials Max Coverage Concealer. When you have mineral powder that you're using as concealer, you know, I'd use liquid concealer now, but I can't let go of this. I have like a love for this. So these will go here with, you'll be proud of me, my, well, you, what are you? This is a jumbo concealer too from Sonia G, Sonia G. I would use this along the crease though, to like put bronzer in the crease or a light shadow. Let's, let's leave it where it belongs um, with the other crease brushes. And then my highlighter brushes, I will stick in there. So that'll be the pocket for those two. I also wanted to share, in addition to using sponges for foundation and the other foundation brushes that we talked about, this is one of the best. Foundation blender from Real Techniques. This is the business right here, this little thing. Why don't I just sit it there? Because right now it's it's gonna be, you know what this is reminds me of? The Mandalorian. The one, the baby. This is gonna be the little baby of the foundation brushes nestled in between the other ones. Hang on, let me try to organize my life and then we'll wrap this up. All of my makeup is in drawers inside of the vanity, but the brushes I keep out on the counter along with all of my other products, like my cleansing products and all of that, it can be a little bit overwhelming. I went through this phase where I wanted surfaces to be completely clear and clean, and then things got a little bit out of hand. So like when we first moved into this house, which was maybe three-ish years ago, I wanted nothing on the bathroom counter except maybe like hand soap and like a little cup to keep our toothbrushes in or something. Well, things ballooned out of control <laughs> and now I barely have any counter space to put my makeup products on, like my makeup palettes, my blushes and things like that because it's taken over by containers, with my makeup brush. So here's what the finished sink area looks like, which if you can believe it, is a lot better than what it was before. I had things sort of pouring over into this space. So this is what we ended up with. Actually, let me pan out a little bit. Not the prettiest, not the most organized, but I think this is gonna work for me for now. It's gonna be better than what I was working with. So let's walk through what we did here. I've got my lip liners in this tall container here. This is all of the cheek brushes for blushes and stuff. Here in this white handle holder that I got all of the wax out of, I'm putting the brushes that I am using in rotation right now. So as I dirty them up, I'll stick them in here. And I've got my you know little fans here to, to blow on my face after I apply setting spray. I needed a place to keep all of my glasses. I'm half blind and I've got a lot of glasses. So they're in this container. The powder brushes are in this big massive container. Here's a place of shame for me. I still have no idea how to 
store products that I use frequently, like a setting spray. I have setting sprays in one of those drawers, but I mean, you need your toothpaste. Where the heck do you store it? I don't want to put it in a drawer. Now let's move on to this. So now you're seeing reality. Excuse my toothbrush, but I had to stick it somewhere. And other things like this, like your nail files. <laughs> Here are the eyeshadow brushes. Remember the crease brushes are up here at the top. And then we've got a container or a section for different kinds. So these are the weirdo brushes that didn't have a specific duty assigned. We've got the concealer brushes and the highlighters here with other utilitarian items. And then here are all the like liner smudger brushes and such. And then these are the brushes that I would use to pack on eyeshadow in special places like the corners of your eye. You have the foundation brushes here. By the way, the baby didn't fit in there. I mean, I guess I could sit it up there like that, but <laughs> not practical. And then I've got my face contouring and bronzing brushes all here in this beautiful big container. Now, here is another sort of messy, messy area of creams and sponges and moisturizers and oils and, oh my gosh, supplements and lash glue. I, you know, it's just going to be what it's going to be. I've got my coffee warmer here for when I get ready in the morning. And if you guys don't know about an eyelash curler, here you go. This is nice. It plugs in and then you stick your eyelash curler on this like that and you plug it in and it warms it up which helps your eyelash curl so guys that is the improvement thanks so much for hanging out with me i hope you enjoyed